and welcome back to African Audience. Today we're back with the Vulcan. I thought for something just fun to do. We're gonna see does porting on a barrel make any difference? So the transport size make any difference. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna shoot the Vulcan as it is now. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab the barrel off my Urigan 2, which has different porting. And we're gonna see does that actually make a difference? So I'm very keen to see what that does. So Alright, let's shoot those 40 burners. Comes back from the range. I'm just going to remove the barrel uh, from the Vulcan, its original barrel. What I've already gone and done is I've already gone and <clears throat> removed all the little screws from the plastic cover here on both sides, and it's just a matter of putting the plastic cover off. And I'll just put this over there. Right. <clears throat> the next thing we're going to do is we're going to undo the two top screws here that hold the scope rail on. Okay, let's quickly undo that. Almost a bit of thing from an angle like this. Okay, so we just got the scope rail over there. All right, so now we have eight other screws that retain the barrel. So we just got to go ahead and undo them all. Okay, you don't have to actually remove them all, <clears throat> you would just want to just loosen them. Just like that, okay. And obviously these guys here on the side. There we go. Come on. Again, spread the torque on them. So I'm going to remove one totally because I'm going to have to eyeball it when I put the, the barrel back in. <clears throat> so then there's four more up here. Now we're just going to undo. Again, I'm going to take them all out. I'm going to just remove one so that I can make sure the barrel's lined up. Okay, and then there's two more. Just like that. Okay. All right, so now the next thing I do <clears throat> is just hold the rifle like this, and I'm just going to pull the whole barrel out from the Vulcan. Okay, so there is the that's how you remove a barrel from a Vulcan. And it's actually the same process for the Urigan, by the way. All right, I'll post uh, pictures quick of the difference between the two ports from the Urigan and for the Vulcan. So then you can see a close-up comparison of the ports. All right, so next thing we're gonna take 
This is Yuri and Barrel. I'm gonna take this barrel and we're gonna reassemble everything. So I think probably the easiest thing to do is just to turn the rifle this way. Just to hold it up. Okay. And we just want to make sure where everything is. We just want to orientate to that correct position. Okay. So before we do final orientation, what I want to do is I want to make I want to check sure check the spacing of the barrels correct. So for this, we're just going to tighten this quick, just to lock it in there, and then we're going to cock the rifle. Okay. And what we want to do is we want to start a mag and we want to take a magazine. We just want to put it in. Make sure that the, we've got the right spacing. So if the barrel's too far in, then obviously it's going to interfere with the mag. So we know that's correct. All right. I just want to make sure that this is in the right position. So, and then I'm just going to lock it down. Because if it's not correct in the correct position, then obviously your transfer is going to be out of line. So we just want to tighten these guys. Make sure we have a mag movement. Everything's 100% there. Okay, and I'm not going to tighten these down just yet, all of them, okay, and then also we have these guys here, okay, one thing I do like about this setup is, is with the um, Uragan, as well as that the barrel is really secured by all these locating points so it's very very nice so and then i not to block us from the camera okay like that and then the last one we just got to put this back in there and then what we're going to do is we're going to torque these in. And again, I'm going to over -torque, torque them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start here and just do quarter, basically a quarter turn like that to torque it in. Just like it, and then I'm going to go opposite. So either side, opposite. Okay, just like that. Okay, just like that. Just like that, that slip there. Just like that. Just like that, and then the last one. Right there. Maybe a bit finicky to get to sometimes. Okay, and then. The last one, you're just going to do like that, okay. All right, so I can remove the mag, and that's fine. I can decop the rifle, just like that. The next thing I want to do is I want to take the scope rail. It's just going to scope rail back on. And again, I'm just going to tighten these down. Just like that. And just like that. Just like that. Okay. And the same thing with the scope rail, we want to just give it a bit of a slight torque just to there. Not even a quarter turn on these, just to there. So we know we won't affect our point of uh, uh, impact when we remount our scope. And then what I'm going to do is. Uh, to save time, I'm, not, I'm just going to show you this goes back on, okay, the slides back on, just like that, and then literally we're going to take these little screws, and I won't bore you guys with the whole video on putting little screws back in, but just like that. All right, guys. So there, that's how you change up the barrel on the Vulcan. It's the same for the year again. And the barrels are interchangeable. So next, we want to head back to the range. We want to see, does that porting 
how much of a difference does it make? All right, now that we've got the barrel changed out of the Irrigan barrel, I'm going to put it onto the Vulcan and see how that's 40 grains left to do. Alright guys, there you have it. Flipping hell. Those things are screaming down there for 40 grand. Unbelievable. And I must say that the group actually seemed to tighten up. There were a couple too small flies from that little tight group, but wow. Alright guys, so there you have the, the numbers. So we took a year again barrel and we installed it onto the Vulcan. And I must say those numbers were pretty impressive. I mean that's just some serious power. 40 grand is doing well over 1,100 uh, feet per second. It's just insane. I mean, this, that's what's so incredible about this sport. I mean, the future for air guns is, is, is definitely, it's definitely going to be incredible. So I'm so excited about the sport. And I hope you guys are too. Guys, thanks for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. And have a great day.